are listening to the most original talk radio station anywhere. We are L.A. Talk Radio at latalkradio.com. You're listening to Peace Fund Radio with Adrian Paul and Ethan Dettenmeyer right here on L.A. Talk Radio. Good morning. Uh, I've just come back from painting my windows. Well, not my windows. I've got my guy doing that, but I'm actually doing... I'm, I'm, I'm running out the door, and he's like, can you help me do this stuff? And I'm like, really? Right now? I've got to go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's hard to be you. Can you so I've just literally just came from pulling out patio doors and, uh, and uh, uh, masking them so that he can actually paint it, because I'm like, I've got to get these done by tomorrow. I've got people coming in and all that lovely stuff so it's been a fabulous week how about you ethan uh it's been that kind of week for me too it's been full of all kinds of challenges uh including one we just found out today but um as always we will rise to the occasion where our audience is concerned and deliver the best power pack show possibly well i did actually say last week that we were going to have lance henrickson on this week but unfortunately he can't make it um so uh, it's just going to be me, you, the wall, and John uh, uh, Billy up in that little closet somewhere that he's at. So, um, but we do have some very interesting stuff this morning we mm-hmm. want to talk about. Um, Such as? I don't want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, that's it. That's it. I'm not, I'm not going to say anything this morning, actually, because I think uh, it's a lot better just to, 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 to be secretive, don't you think? I, I, well, you know, it depends who you're being secretive. Too, I prefer to know the secrets, especially from a radio show producer standpoint. But if you want to be secretive, I suppose we can roll with that. It too. might be the wrong way to do it on a radio show, though, isn't it? Yeah. So, okay, here's the question: What? Uh, what does your does your daughter swim? She does. She does. And when she was younger, did you you know keep her safe around water? Did you you know what was what was the precautions you had? Because I literally uh, I now have a. I'll tell you about it. There's my question for you, Ethan. That's- well, I was, uh, I'm was i uber cautious, as most people know, and it may be a side effect I'm finding out of my PTSD. But the reality is is I'm over cautious to the point where um, I stay sane and make everyone else crazy with it. But the fact of the matter was is I was actually barraged with stories about infant deaths, uh, you know, kids, parents not knowing where their kid is and shockingly – enough finding them at the bottom of the swimming pool and different things to Tommy Lee, the two kids that died at Tommy Lee's house that are home from Miley Crew. I've heard all these stories. Right. So I certainly embraced it as a re- possible reality. Well, here's, here's a question for our viewers, and you can Twitter this answer. You can call us uh, if you want to do that. Um, what's our number, Ethan? Oh, our number is 818-602-4929. Okay, That's- so here's, a, here's, here's, a, here's a, a question for you all out there. What is this true or false? Children under the age of one most often drown in home pools. Is that true or false? What would you say, Ethan? Ethan? Uh, I would say that's probably true. Okay, so that's that's your answer, and uh, we're going to give it another ten, fifteen minutes before I actually bring you the answer to that particular question. Um, basically, it is important keeping our kids safe around water. I know I have that firsthand experience when my daughter was about. Two years old. Um, I was in the pool with her. My wife was holding a newborn. who's was about three months old at the time. Um, and she was standing by the edge of the pool. And I'd been playing with my daughter, pushing her back and forth. And I said to her, well, she's sitting on the steps. I said, you stay there. I'm just going to swim to the other side of the pool and come back. So she said, yes, of course I will. So I literally turned around and I, and I swam. And I got to about the other end of the pool. I'm hearing, and my wife's like, ah! And, my, and I turn around and my daughter's underwater. And yeah. I literally had to – she actually went in and picked her out and pulled her up. I mean, I, but I learned at that time you cannot even – even if they say, yes, I will, they will not stay. And, you know, uh, at that point I was like, okay, you've got to be a lot more careful with your kid because it can happen in a second. And actually this weekend I was at a golf – charity golf tournament uh, down at uh, the uh, Monarch Bay at St. Regis Hotel. There's a hotel and there was uh, a pool there. And my wife told me she said she was sitting in the, in the hot tub uh, or by the by, the small pool, and there was a little boy, a little girl in there that was uh, going up and down and going under and coming up and going under, and coming up. And the parents were right, right there, right there. And um, all of a sudden, the kid goes down, and kid doesn't come up. The parents uh. don't see it. So another woman just happened to be there and pulled the girl up, and the girl came up, going, 
it was that quick. You got to keep an eye on your kids. I mean, literally, you know, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, you could be in serious trouble. Um, so since we've got the warm weather quickly approaching, it's a great way to, to um, enjoy the fun in the sun, but it's also fitting that May, which we're in right now, is a National Water Safety Month. Is it? Yeah, it is indeed. It is indeed. So whether you plan to hit the waves at the beach, the lounge, at the local pool, or float, float down to the lazy river at your closest water park, it's a staggering statistic and a silent threat that kind of circles around swimmers right now. Roughly 4,000 Americans drown each year, and one in five children who drown do so in a pool with a lifeguard present. That's remarkable. With a lifeguard present. So it doesn't matter if you think the lifeguard is there. Keep an eye on your kids. You know, one of you, keep an eye on your kids. It's your responsibility. It's your responsibility. It's like uh, raising your child is your responsibility. Nobody else's. I mean, kids love to play in in and around water, but no matter where you find it, in a bucket, a bowl, a toilet, tub, sink, puddle, or pool, water is dangerous because we don't breathe water. And... (laughs) Although you've probably heard this more than once, it's worth repeating. A child can drown in less than two inches of water. I'm letting that sit for a second because that's two inches. Measure that in your hand right now, two inches, how much water that is. Because if it's a baby, a baby can't turn itself back around again. It's just got its head stuck in the water and it won't be able to breathe. So I think that's those those are staggering numbers you know, because you just don't think about that. I mean... You know, I know, and, and I watch. You know, I'm, my daughter now is beginning just with taking her to swimming lessons and stuff like that, and uh, she's she's getting used to. You know, I'm teaching her how to swim underwater, and, and she loves it. I absolutely love it. my my son too. My son's nearly two years old, and now he's loving the water. He's got his floaties on, and he'll dive in, and you know, and you know, he drank half the pool, which actually <laughs> caused um caused uh, like a ripple effect later on in, at the other end of the uh, system, <clears throat> um, but. Um, you know, he uh, he just jumps in, and kids do that. They, especially boys. Like I've said before, boys tend to be a little bit more. Um, let me jump off and see what happens at the other end. Right. <laughs> My daughter was like that. She loved to just run and jump, and uh, it was it was nerve wracking. But I was I was I was a vigilant. A what? I, I, I was a vigilant. I was a vigilant. Di- no, diligent. In, yeah, a vigilant. In my, in my, uh, I was like, is that a new word in the English dictionary? It is. It's a word I made up that means uh, be vig- super vigil and awesome diligent. and diligent simultaneously. You know, you haven't actually said that word in a long time. With Ethan in the sentence, awesome Ethan. Ethan I should awesome. say it more, but I think the reason I don't is because I just expect everyone to get it. Ah. So That's, I don't feel I need to tell you, but if you need to hear it more often, Adrian, I'm happy to. I'm happy to remind everyone. Hey, by the way, awesome I've, got, I've got another awesomeness for you. When's your soccer match? Um, it's actually going to be in August this year. In August, yes, okay. It's, it's pushed because of the World Cup, and I have. Um, That's good because I can't. Uh, yeah, I have two commitments. I have two commitments to producers formerly at Warner Brothers right now, and I've got four book assignments I'm on, so I can't even fathom. Doing playing, anything else, playing. right? Yeah, yeah no, I'm I'm in the yeah. same way right now. I mean, our uh, paintball competition is really moving forward. We're, we've got some great announcements. We're going to be making in about another two three weeks. We've just finished the logo, which I will be putting out on uh, to show you guys. We are now talking to our celebrity friends, our sponsors. We've already I'm got some sponsors to this. on this. It's actually going to be huge. As well as that, I've also uh, last night kind of structured our poker tournament. So we're going to be, um, you know, bringing some news about that. We've got our golf tournament, which is actually in uh, in August mm-hmm. with uh, David Frey. You can read all about it at www.thepeacefund.org. There's information on there. Twitter, Twitter it out for us, guys, because that, uh, that stuff, you know, people out on the East Coast who might want to go and play golf can support a worthy cause in the David Frey Memorial, as well as the Peace Fund. We're actually uh, supporting a young man, and you can read all about it on the Peace Fund site. So, um, you know, please look at that. It's a, it's a great little uh, thing that's, uh, that's happening in August that you can go and have fun and play golf at, you know. Um, I also play, as I said, play golf this weekend. That um, We need more fun. Well, yeah, I mean, and, I mean, it was amazing to watch. I mean, I, I supported 911 for Kids, which is another great organization that have been on the show before. Tim Brown has come on this show. 
Um, I saw Tim this weekend. Uh, Kathy Island wasn't there, but I, I, I'd love to bring her on the show at some point to talk to her. But there was many others, Marcus Allen and uh, so many other celebrities that, that were there, Bill Bellamy. Uh, it was numerous, the, the amount of celebrities that were supporting this uh, because, you know, it was a fun day for them and it was also supporting a charity that was very important, uh, safety around kids. So let's go back to the safety that we were talking about a second ago, which is water and safety. The facts are the average of 390 children drown each year in the United States, most younger than five, according to two new reports. We're talking about 15 preschool classes lost in a pool or spa every year. Wow. Right. So from Memorial Day through Labor Day 2013, at least 202 children between the ages of one and 14 drowned in a swimming pool or spa in the United States, according to media reports compiled by the USA Swimming Foundation. Of those... 143 of the victims were children younger than five years old. That's unbelievable. Staggering. Well, it, well yeah, when you think about it, I mean, okay, the, you know, you look at the percentages. I mean, that's a very small percent of the population, but still the numbers should not be that. The, you know, we should be keeping a very diligent eye on our kids and know whether they can swim or not and put, take the time to actually either teach them ourselves get someone, or get someone to teach them how to, to behave around water. They could fall in. I mean, the great. Uh, there are some sort of uh, classes that show kids when they fall in, what should they do? Even kids as young as uh, one and a half years old, they get taught to roll over and, and breathe and then paddle and roll over and breathe and paddle and get reach the shallow area where they can hang on. Because literally, if they hang on for a minute, that could save their lives. Yeah. A minute or two minutes can save their lives. And that's actually a long time to tread water. Yeah, exactly. So they, they've got to know how to get to the side of the pool. If, if a kid's on, on the water, my, my daughter can tread water for now for about maybe 10, 15 seconds. And she's four. But she can go under and she can swim. And do, but she's not quite used to being able to swim and keep afloat and do all that lovely stuff yet. She's very close to doing it. But the fact is, if she fell in, she would have to know how to get to the side of the pool and fast. Yeah. So drowning is the leading cause of death of injury. Sorry, I'll say that again. Drowning is the leading cause of injury death for young children ages one to four. Submersion takes less than 10 seconds, like I just said, 10 seconds. Losing consciousness takes two minutes. Permanent brain damage takes four to six minutes. That's staggering. So remember, as I said, we've always said this before, one thing leads to another. It's a domino effect. Permanent brain damage takes four to six minutes for a child. And if that happens... You are going to be dealing with a lifetime of pain for you and your child. For every child who dies by drowning, another four are hospitalized. Many never recover from brain damage that occurs while they're underwater. Most young children who drown in pools were last seen inside the house. Now, I, I know I know, I actually, uh, we do that because um, my mother-in-law's townhouse, we, t- we tend to go there sometimes. It has the front door and a gate. Well, both the kids can open. So put a lock on it. Put a lock on your door. Put a lock on your gate. Because the kids will sometimes go, oh, let's go out there. Oh, look, there's a squirrel. Oh, look, there's the pool. Oh, look, shall I jump in? And all of a sudden, you're dealing with a whole dun- bunch of problems. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's you know. M- it's not funny. It's just funny how you classify it. No, I mean, it. And, and the funny, but the funny thing is that most kids that have drowned have been out of sight less than five minutes from their parents when both of, one or both the parents were there at the time of the event. Yeah. So 19% of drowning deaths involving children occur in public pools with certified lifeguards present. So it's no joke that even when they are being um, monitored, accidents can happen. So just be a little bit more careful about that. So at the beginning of the show, I actually asked, I'm going to ask it again. Here's a question for you. Is this true or false? Children under the age of one most often drown in home pools. Ethan says that is probably true. What do you guys think? I don't want it to be true. I know, but is that true in home pools? Send us your Twitter. Okay, I'm going to my Twitter. Thank you very much. Just to find out what we've got here. Anyway, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, it's estimated that for each drowning death... There are one to four non-fatal submersions serious enough to result in hospitalization. Children who still require cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, 
at the time they arrive at the emergency department have poor prognosis, with at least half of the survivors surviving suffering sorry significant neurological impairment. Now, actually, I'm kind of curious. We'll go. We'll bring John in early if he's around. Is John around? Uh, on, on John his? is around. So let's bring. So let's John bring him because I just wanted to actually. Uh, um, yeah, can you guys can you guys see me okay? Yes, we can hear you fabulously, John. Okay, good. I'd, I'd actually thrown in some comments earlier that weren't coming through, so I wasn't sure. I think I'm having equipment trouble on my end. Shocking. Shocking, I know. Well, equipment trouble? What type of equipment trouble, John? Well, you know, I've got this, uh, this, this microphone and headset. That's, it's only about, you know, six or seven years old, but uh, it's, okay. it's putting along. It's putting along. So what's your, what's, your, what's your belief? Children under the age of one most often dr- drown in home pools. Is that true or false? Oh my gosh! I would, I would, unfor- I, I got to go with Ethan. On, Ethan on this one. I think, unfortunately, that that sounds like would probably be true. Okay, okay. Do we have any responses on our Twitter, John, or or, or Ethan, regarding this from people? Let's uh, see. Anybody- we have. I have actually a response. Actually, you should hashtag it Peace Fund Radio, people. It'd be easier for us to find since we're all searching different Twitter feeds. But I got something here from uh, Agent Jim Good, who uh, says he bets they uh, they drown in the home bathtub more often. Which actually, that sounds okay. That's a good. That's yeah. a good. This is just we a have, terrific uh, topic. We have one from Zod's Captain who says, "I think they do drown most often in their homes pool." Okay. The cold reality: just two days ago, a one-year-old boy drowned in the backyard spa in Cupertino, California. The little boy was being watched by someone at home. But he somehow made his way into the backyard and into the spa. The death came two days after an 18-month-old boy was found dead in an Antioch swimming pool. These tragedies serve as a sad reminder of the dangers of children in swimming pools in the light of this coming summer season. So please be careful with your children. Always remember, drowning is almost always a deceptively quiet event. The waving, splashing, and yelling that dramatically conditioning TV prepares us to look for is rarely seen in real life, like I saw, because all I saw underwater when my daughter was under the water was she was, I just saw her hands kind of, the bubbles above the water, you couldn't really hear too much. And according to the CDC, in 10% of these drownings, the adult will actually watch the child do it, having no idea it is happening. Think about that, I'm going to say it again. The adult will actually watch the child do it. You will watch your child die having no idea it's happening if you're not really paying attention. A swimmer in distress may still be able to stay afloat, shout, and attract attention, but an active drowning victim devotes all his or her energy to the struggle to breathe. He can't or she can't call out for help, and their arms are pressed down at his sides in an instinctive attempt to keep his head above water. Now, I'm going to give you that again, the answer to that again, because this was a, an answer. The question is, children under the age of one most often drown in home pools. Is that true or false? It is false. Children in this age group most often drown in bathtubs, buckets, or toilets, according to the American Red Cross, which suggests using safety locks on toilets, empty, bu- empty buckets immediately after use, and never leave the filled bucket or bathtub unattended. These are not necessarily trick questions, but they make, I want to make you think about these things because it is our children's safety that we are talking about. Ugh, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Now, water safety tips. Most children drawn to water, you know, it's a sparkly little floaty thing, and it's fun to splash. My kid kind of always, you know, throws himself in it, sees the ball in the water, sees the, the floaties in the water, sees the something at the bottom of the pool, whatever it is. But water safety is no laughing matter. Any, anyone that can have a water-related accident, even kids who know how to swim. So keeping them, teach children water safety and swimming skills as early as possible. One of the easiest water safety things is don't run around the pool. That's why they tell you not to run. Because if you slip, you could slip, hit your head on the side of the pool and, f- and fall in. That also applies to not kids just for one to five years old, but for kids that are... Six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, because that can happen. Actively supervise kids in, op- in around open bodies of water, giving them your undivided attention. Never leave your kid unattended. Put the cell phone away. Put your uh, your magazine away. Forget about everything, and give your kids one hundred percent of your attention when they're near or around water. It's very simple, and it's very. I know we we. It's one sometimes. You know, I said to my wife the other day, I said, when they learn to swim, it would be great. We can just, like, sit there and relax a little bit. But, you know, sometimes you've got to think about that. Do you, what, do you, what about you, Ethan? Do you go to, when you go to a swimming pool, do you keep an eye on your daughter still? Oh, yeah, or, or No, I still do. 
And your daughter's how old? Ten. Uh, she's 11, eleven now. I mean, I still stand at the edge of the. You can't really trust the lifeguard to take on the responsibility for it. Um, so, I'm usually at the water's edge, pretty close. What about you, John? Have you have you ever had any uh, experiences um, uh, regarding uh, water safety? Anything that happened in a pool or anything like that? Personally, no. I mean, when I was when I was really young, probably I don't know, maybe maybe four. My parents took me to swimming lessons, and I think that's a good thing for for young kids to do because it teaches them to have a respect for the water, for an awareness of the water. Uh, I had an aunt who had a swimming pool when I was growing up that we would go swimming there every once in a while. But there are always always pay, you know always plenty of parents around. And as I as I got older, I had lots of friends who while we were all in high school, worked as lifeguards at the local local swimming pools, and they all had horror stories about, you know, some of the things that, you know, kids they would have to say because parents weren't paying attention to this or that. So I think I've always kind of had a pretty healthy respect for for the water. I'm not, I'm not the world's strongest swimmer either, so I think for... For my for, for myself, I, I kind of take an extra... I, I, give, I give plenty of... Um, Plenty of respect to the water because things can go wrong very quickly if you're not aware and and able to be in the uh, depth of water that you're in. Okay, here's a challenge for you all. Ethan, I want to ask you this. John, I'm going to ask you this. Do either of you know how to do CPR? I do. I do, yes. Good, 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 because that's so – Every the local hospitals, fire departments, and recreation departments offer CPR training. It does not take long. We did it when we when our kids were um, uh, were very young. I would to take a refresher course is is good because kids CPR is slightly different than adult CPR. Um, so, c- can you guys go out there? Can you go to your local hospital or find out about it? If you've got kids, go out there. Or if you know someone that's got kids, ask them. Say to them, "Listen, I know uh, swimming season's coming up." Uh, have you taken a CPR course just in case anything happens? And if they turn around you and say, oh, don't worry, nothing will happen, then you sh- might want to talk to them about some of the statistics that we've been talking about this morning because it can happen in the blink of an eye. Don't rely on air-filled or foam toys such as water wings, noodles, or inner tubes to keep kids safe. Don't use these flotation survi- devices as a substitute for supervision. You should never allow a kid in a pool without an adult. That's very, very important. I mean, I've watched, I just put floaties on my, on my kid's arms and they started falling down towards his, towards his, um, uh, his elbows and further, and further down. Now, if they go that low, suddenly it's not holding up the top part of the body anymore. It's just holding up the arms. What happens? The lower part of the body and the head go underwater. If you're not watching that, stuff can happen. Another thing, beware of drains. Don't allow children to play n- near or sit on a pool or hot tub drains. Bo- body parts and hair can become entrapped by strong suction using, using drain covers and consi- use drain covers and consider installing multiple drains to reduce the suction. It's another thing because kids, you know, like their, their, their costume can get caught in the, in, the drain, in the drain of a pool. There's so many things you just don't think about. And obviously, if you've got a pool, make sure you've got rescue equipment cl- close by. Don't wait for the paramedics to arrive because you lose valuable life-saving seconds. As I said before, four to six minutes without oxygen can cause permanent brain damage or death. Or death. Keep a first aid kit at poolside. Yeah, don't most let, pools uh, have a first aid kit? No, they don't, do they? No, not a lot. You've got communal pools. That's a good idea. Do you have one? I mean, and do you have one at your home pool? I have a pretty good-sized first aid kit. It's... Uh, the interesting thing is, is it is it good? Remember, it's oxygen. If you need to give them oxygen, you need it, it's, it's a it's it's a small device that you can actually give. You know, a, a, a canister of oxygen would be a great thing to give them immediately. That will give them at least a fighting chance not to have brain damage if your child has been in the water for that amount of time, or even if they've been spluttering and you've done CPR, give them the oxygen. If you watch, that is one of the first things. Uh, paramedics do from a drowning victim they need to get air back into them so that the blood can go the oxygen can go to the blood that feeds the brain another another thing that a lot of my friends have is four-sided isolation fencing at least five feet high equipped with self-closing and self-latching gates that completely surround the pool and prevent direct access from the house or yard now if you want to really go there install an alarm if your house serves as part of a pool enclosure 
Protect any doors leading to the pool area with an alarm. I actually have that on all my doors. Any door that opens, an alarm goes. So if someone's opening one of my, one of my exterior doors, I know they're opening it. So if my kids are even going out to play in the backyard, I know it. So I can keep a, an eye on them. Add an underwater pool alarm that sounds when something hits the water. Make sure you can hear the alarm inside the house. These are slightly extra things, but if you take care of some of the others, you may not need those those other e- extra expenses. But they could save your child's life. So, natural bodies of water, such as ponds, lakes, rivers, and oceans. And, you know, the depth can change very quickly. I mean, I know that... Uh, and currents too. I got caught. You ever been caught in a riptide? No. John, you? Never have. No, I don't live. We really you live in landlocked. That's right. You live in, in a closet. Nowhere, I forgot. So. You live in a closet. I forgot. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, it's happened no, to me so twice. Really. It's happened to me twice. And I was with a, uh, with a bunch of people both times. The first time was in St. Bart's. We went out and we, you know, as guys do, hey, we're going to go swim and uh, we're going to go out there and show you girls how we we're so manly. And, uh, you know, you go out there and suddenly you start swimming back in. That is a recipe for disaster. <laughs> I'd say it is, totally. And you go out and you think you can swim, but the ocean is a very powerful organism. And suddenly you're caught in a riptide. What do you do when you're caught in a riptide? Ethan, what do you do? Do you go with the riptide? Do you sw- try and swim back in? What What would you do you if you got caught in a riptide? You can't swim back in. You have to go with the tide. You go with the tide. So you go back out in, more further into the ocean? Uh, you can. It depends. Why? What do you do? Well, no, you no. were caught in them twice. I got caught in them twice. Uh, the last time was this December, actually. Uh, I was in a, a wedding party. We went out, um, and uh, eight of us out of the... 15 or 16 people that actually went out to look at the tortoises and uh, the, sorry the turtles uh, decided to go slightly further out to the reef with a guide and out there you can you actually always have to keep whenever you're in the ocean keep an eye on some landmark if you notice you're drifting that means you're getting pulled across and all of a sudden you'll get stuck <clears throat> and we noticed we'd gone past this boat which was our eye line and the, the, the guide said okay let's go start getting back in now so everybody who was closer to the shore started going in and they weren't quite caught in the rip me and the the groom were slightly further out and i said to him come on let's go back in i started paddling back and i saw him starting to struggle i'm like he goes wait 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 and i was like okay come on let's go let's go let's get going let's get going and um as we start putting he starts putting his life jacket on i'm like okay i can see that there's going to be that i can feel that this is getting so we had life jackets on and we start going i said go parallel to the shore because with a riptide what happens it pulls you out you have to go parallel and go around the riptide you don't go against it you don't let it pull you out further you go along so we were paddling out along the shore going along the waves not against them or with them and as we got uh, just out of just out of the uh, rip a boat came up and uh, they pulled in the, the actual um, a guy to come back out again and had gotten a hold of uh, the groom. And uh, this, so all of a sudden, this boat appears out of nowhere and uh, says, oh, we got to take you in. We take you in, man. You, you, you're, we're, like, we're okay. We're out of the No, no, no. We have to take you in. We've come out now. We've got to take you in. So, all right. They took us in. Then they picked somebody else up further in who was not in the rip at all. And when we got to shore, they said, okay, that's $120. It's $25 a person. What? Just to pick us up. $25 a person? Just to pick us up. Mm. Um, It's a little bit of a rip. But anyway. I don't know. Uh, 25 bucks to maybe (laughs) save someone's life. Yeah, but we weren't really in trouble at that point. If it was was then, I understand it. But, you know, and they picked somebody up that was nowhere near the the rip as well. They just want to pick them up because they're good. You know how it goes, man. I mean, who's to judge these things? But anyway, that's talking about rip ties. It's slightly different. Kids. Don't allow them to swim alone or without adult supervision. Wear a life jacket. Children should always wear flotation devices whenever riding in a boat or fishing. Uh, Air-filled swimming aid isn't a substitute for a life jacket. Feet first. The feet descend into any body of water should be a jump. Feet first. Before the jump, check water depth and temperature and look for underwater hazards. How many times have you guys out there taken a dive into the pool and hit the bottom? I've done it. I did it as a kid. I met a guy who was paralyzed from that. Exactly. Feet first, unless you know the depth of the water. John, what about you? I heard you were going to say something. No, I've never, I've never, I've never hit the bottom jumping in. But oh gosh. And also, yeah. and also if you're and if you're diving off a rock, so I used to 
cliff dive, a cliff dive off of maybe 10 meters or something when I was, you know, young and stupid. Um, but, you know, in, into a pool that I knew was deep enough and that was what it was there for. But what happens is a lot of times when the waves come in and out, the water depth changes. So you've got to be very careful about that. And especially rocks too. I mean, you never know. You never know what's down there. You never know what's down there. No, I've been caught. I've been caught into in, in water before when the water takes you and hits you against a rock, and you don't realize how strong it is. It looks gentle, but you're talking about a massive amount of water just washing you up against a rock. It might look very gentle, but you can get your head split open. You can get you know bruised, banged up very badly. Um, so at public beaches, stay in designated areas. Make sure your kids do too. Swim only in areas set aside for swimming. Don't let, allow kids to swim in drainage ditch or other water-filled areas not intended for swimming because not only is it dangerous, it could also be polluted. You just don't know what's in it. I'm sure it's polluted. Exactly. And lastly, beware of thin ice. Drowning can occur in the winter too. Avoid, uh, avoid walking, skating, or, ri- uh, or riding on weak or thawing ice. Now, there are a lot of organizations that are that do make a difference. The YMCA is one of them, uh, www.ymca.net. There are 2,686 YMCAs across America serving more than 21 million people every year. They unite men, women, and kids of all ages, faiths, creeds, backgrounds, uh, swimming abilities, income levels, doesn't matter. Swimming, it's a life skill as well as great exercise in a challenging sport. The YMCA's offer swim lessons for all ages. So you can actually check out your YMCA. You can do a family swim, you can do they can do they competitive swimming, diving teams, and they do many kinds of adaptive swim programs for kids with special needs so that we can all enjoy safety safely the pleasures of an aquatic environment. Mm-hmm. The other one is the American Red Cross. They also have courses designed for students of all ages, learning how to swim or keep your sp- or your keeping your pool or spa safe and clean. Uh, they have this these programs that are developed for children six months to three years. Uh, parent and child aquatics helps young children get ready to swim by emphasizing fun in the water. Parents and children participate in several guided practice sessions that help kids learn elementary swimming skills, including water entry, which we just talked about, uh, bubble blowing, front kicking, back floating, underwater exploration, and more. It's a lot of fun to do, but you know it's, it's, it's a necessity. They also have a Learn to Swim program, which is designed for children over six years old all the way up to adults. You know, my mom can't swim. I remember she'd like call them doggy paddles. I, I always found that funny, but no, when I think about it now, my mother-in-law doesn't want to go anywhere near the water because I don't think she, she can swim. She has a flotation device. She's 60. So, you know, I mean... I think a lot of people um, who are born in the Midwest, they don't learn to swim. No, they don't. I mean, it's, it doesn't even matter if it's the Midwest. We had Kimberly Moore here on the show at one point, and she was talking about the low-income families that have never even seen the ocean. They don't know how to swim. They've never seen the ocean because they live 20 miles inland and can't afford to go there. So, each anyway, the next uh, program is actually also called uh, Safe Kids Worldwide, www.safekids.org. Safe Kids Worldwide is a global organization dedicated to preventing injuries in children, the number one killer of kids in the United States. Around the world, a child dies from an unintentional injury every 30 seconds, and millions of children are injured in ways that can affect them for a lifetime. Like we discussed, you know, brain damage can affect them and you, the, your parents, and their entire the, 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 the lifespan of that child. Visit Safe Kids Worldwide for more information on how to keep your children safe in and around water. That's our... Um, informational side of the 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 show today um i know we we want to actually go and take a um a hero of the week and i I, i'm I'm gonna let john discuss about that i mean it's um go ahead john i think uh uh, uh, it's a drum roll i think at the moment (laughs) thank you yeah that'll that'll do yes uh our hero of the week this week i wanted to choose someone since our Topic today was swimming safety. I wanted to, fo- to to find a young person whose focus was safety for other kids, and we yeah. found an excellent young lady from my own home state of Indiana named Olivia Keith. Now Olivia is ten years old, 
and you can read about her at oliviakeith.com. Now, one of the first things that you'll see when you come to Olivia's website are some statistics about brain injuries. Brain injuries can happen anytime, anywhere, to anyone, Olivia writes. Every 18.5 seconds, someone in America suffers from a brain injury, and across the United States, 1.7 million people are injured each year. About 75% of traumatic brain injuries that occur each year are concussions or other forms of mild injuries. Injury is the leading cause of death among children and teens. The leading cause of death, injury. The most frequent causes of these injuries are motor vehicle crashes, violence, falls, and sports and recreation, which, as we've discussed this morning, can include swimming accidents. And as Olivia writes on her site, the good news is that all of these... All of these injuries, these are things that are preventable if, we just, if we're just careful, if we take the time to think about what we're doing and where we are, be aware of our surroundings. The reason that Olivia is so interested in, in brain injuries as a topic is that both of her parents have suffered from brain injuries. So she's seen firsthand how a brain injury can affect the, the life of the person who's been injured. It can affect the rest of the family. And she says, I don't wish to see my friends or other people experience what her, what her mother in particular has had, to, has had to deal with. So Olivia decided that she was going to create her own, her own organization called Play It Safe. Now, with Play It Safe, Olivia goes around to all kinds of schools, community events, and puts on a really great little program about safety for children. She starts off with some of the basics, as she says, uh, eating the right foods, getting enough sleep, exercising for at least an hour a day are a perfect start toward having good brain health. Wear protective equipment when you bike, including helmets, seat belts when you ride in the car, play by the rules in sports to help reduce the incidence and severity of brain injury. When you're outside, make sure you can be seen. If somebody can't see you, they can accidentally hurt or run into you. All of the stuff I'm reading, this is all in Olivia's own words. Her website is absolutely fantastic. She has pictures from all of her different events and safety fairs and presentations that she's attended and, and organized herself. She has an interactive, interactive display that she takes around with her so that kids can sign a pledge to say that I'm go- I pledge to always wear my seatbelt. I pledge to always wear a helmet when I bike. And every child who comes to one of her programs gets a tip card that has five ways to play it safe. And in addition to everything that she does with the Play It Safe organization, she's also partnered with all kinds of other organizations as, as well. And again, this girl is she's 10 years old. Absolutely amazing. She has worked with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. She uh, has also done a lot of work with uh, the Dave Dewerson Society. Now, the Dave Dewerson was the NFL player who in 2011 uh, died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the chest. He had had several concussions throughout his NFL career. He sent a message to his family before he took his life saying that he wanted his brain to be used for research at the Boston University School of Medicine, which were conducting research into something called chronic traumatic encephalopathy. I think I pronounced that correctly, which is fairly common with with football players and it's it was just absolutely tragic i mean you know he knew he knew there was something wrong he knew where the research was being done about what was wrong with him and you know that's that's it's uh, just a really a really tragic story but once boston university his, his family did follow his wishes they donated his brain to boston university and the neurologists there did did discover that he suffered from exactly what he thought he did which was linked to multiple concussions. So she has done, Olivia has done a lot of work with Mike Dewerson, who is Dave's brother, in getting all kinds of awareness put out there about that. So just like I said, this young lady is just really, really amazing. If you check out her Facebook page at facebook.com slash you play it safe. It's letter U, play it safe. Or follow her on Twitter at play underscore it underscore safe underscore you can read all about the various programs and things that she's got going on. And it's really cool because on her Facebook page, she's always putting all kinds of tips and information that parents and kids can read about how to be safe in whatever activities that they're doing. And I've actually uh, been in touch with Olivia's mother, Darcy, today. We're going to try to get her on the show very soon. So she'll be able to give us some more information about all the things that she's up to. So Olivia Keith from, again, my home state of Indiana, doing
do any, making Indiana proud. You are our Peace Fund Radio Hero of the Week, and we will be speaking with you very soon about some of the incredible things that you've done, including $27,000 she helped raise for brain injury research uh, at, a, at a bowling tournament that she was a part of. You know, it's I was just looking at her website, actually. She's a sweet, sweet looking girl. She's, uh, you know, obviously what we're talking about here are grassroots organizations that uh, want to make a difference and want to do something to help other people. So it takes five minutes to check them out. It takes five minutes to also donate or give yourself, give them five bucks or ten bucks. But, you know, 100,000 people do that. All of a sudden you're raising a lot of money. So, yes. um, you know. Brain injuries can happen at any particular time. As we said, it can happen in the water. Um, we do not want that. That's why we, we, we're here to sort of give people just some reminders. I wouldn't say tips because a lot of you know exactly what we're talking about. Some of you don't. But they're reminders. They're reminders to say, you know what, maybe I should do that. Maybe this year my kids are going to be close to water. I'm going on a vacation to a lake. I'm going to go and see my Auntie Gertrude in, uh, in Indianapolis who has a huge swimming pool. Whatever it is. I don't know why Gertrude came up, but anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the fact is you've got to keep, you know, kids safe uh, if you're going to do it. So it's just a reminder just there. And so Olivia Keith, um, I know that uh, she encompasses a bunch of other things. You can see her website. I'm looking at it right now, all the things that she's been able to accomplish. Um, and uh, it's a, a young lady wanting to, to, as I can read here, both her parents have a brain injury. And they don't want kids to experience what their parents experience daily. So remember, if your kids are around water, they can experience brain damage if they fall into water. You do not want to do that because it can be a lifetime of misery. Mm-hmm. What a way to, to sort of get toward the end of the show. I don't want to bring that down. I mean, let's... let's uh, well, I think it's good. You know, I think, you know, as you, as you said, Adrian, this is, you know, one young person who has taken it upon herself to kind of get out there and, and spread the word. And this is and this is how it starts. She was awarded an Indiana Hero Award um, for her overwhelming community service. And she actually was recognized by the Indiana Pacers as an Indiana Hero in November 2013. She got to go out and accept her award on the floor. Everyone who was at that game would have heard her message and seen wow look at what this look, look at what this this 10 year old girl is doing for awareness for for something important lessons that every parent and every kid needs to know about being safe and aware so you know it's, it's i think that's uh, it's just so exciting when we, when you research these heroes of the week and think that you have these you know these these kids they're they're so young but they do they do so much and they have such big hearts and they're not afraid to you know, to get out there and, and give their message. And it's just, it's, it's, it's so inspiring. It's really changed the way I personally think about a lot of things in my own life. It's like, you know, well, gosh, this seems difficult, but, you know, you've got Olivia here who did this or some of her other heroes who have done amazing things. It's just, uh, it's just, a, it's, a, it's an exciting thing to be a part of, of learning about kids like Olivia who are out there getting it done every day. Indeed. Well, you know, I mean, the, the, the thing is, and as we've s- talked about it before, when, you, when you're young, you don't no is not exactly a word. It's, it's fun, you know what's really funny about the word no is that it's one of the first words every child learns when the, the first things they actually say. My son says no to everything right now. Absolutely no. <laughs> no, no, no. Do you want this? No. Do you want food? No. Do you want to sleep? No. Do you want this? No. But it really means yes, but it's no. But the fact is, is that kids, when you don't know how to take no as an answer, that's what's great about kids because they've not been damaged by people, you know, telling them no and they can't do it. By the time you're 30, 40 years old, that no, you start getting burnt a little bit. So listen to kids because kids actually have a passion for things. And what you may believe is no in your life might be a yes that they can, they can actually achieve. And that's why I also want to give a prop out to a lot of the parents of our um, uh, Kid Heroes of the Week because – you know, it's the parents who actually support their kids, support them to and say, you know what, I might not be able to do that, but let's just see what where it goes. It's not going to hurt. And besides, even if it doesn't work, it gives them some sort of initiative and some sort of goal. Which is every every time you have a goal, to reach a goal is 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 so important in life because we can. It, it makes us strive harder to reach it. So if a kid's got a goal, support them. Right? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. You know, I mean, so I think that's um, it's a it's an important thing. What we've been talking about for those of you who might have just joined us or 
will join us at a later date. We've been talking about safety tips of children around the water. The question I asked at the beginning of the show was, children under the age of one most often drown in home pools. Is that true or false? It is false, because most often they drown in bathtubs, buckets, or toilets. Ugh. So, you know, kids can drown in two inches of water if they're that young and they can't turn themselves over. So just be aware of it. Two, That's two inches of water. Horrendous to think about. Yeah, but do, as I said, do mark out two inches on your fingers. It's literally, I mean, <laughs> it's so small that you think, how can you drown in that? It's not possible, but, you know. Let me tweet a photo of exactly how much that is. Okay, Go I'm going to tweet a photo. I'm actually going to take a photo right now of two inches. That's about an inch. Here, let me get my That's camera about, ready. He's going to tweet this out with what me. I'm holding up on my two fingers. Um, so actually, you know what's kind of funny? It's actually the distance between my top lip and my chin. Well, it's hold tight. I mean, let me get the photo possible. here. Ready? One, two. That, ladies and gentlemen, is about two three. inches. I'm glad I got that photo. You got that photo. It's going to be tweeted <laughs> I can use that for so many things. Oh, God. Now I've actually opened up a can of... Uh, but it's, I'm glad that we're making the point of how little water it takes to end a human life. So. Yes. And our, our Twitter handles for everyone out there listening, Adrian's is Adrian Paul, at Adrian Paul one Ethan, at Combat Radio, and the show at Peace Fund Radio. So... Uh, what else do we want to talk about, John? Do we have anything else that's uh, coming up right now? I mean, I, I did mention the uh, paintball and the poker tournament, which um, is definitely... Uh, let, me, let me go through our checklist. We talked about how awesome I was. We talked about how, <laughs> oh, uh, yes. You know, when I make up new words, yes. it's okay, because I and am, in golf, fact, golf awesome. Golf tournament, tournament uh, in August. We got that mentioned. Golf tournament, um, soccer tournament coming up. What other things did we talk about? Um, Lance Hendrickson couldn't make it. Lance Hendrickson couldn't make it. Well, yeah. huh? that can happen sometimes, you know. Lance, it's lost. It's Lance, lost. Lance, Lance. Well, you know, it's uh, well, maybe we'll, we'll share, uh, uh, he'll come in at another stage, you know. I mean, work does pr- take precedence a lot of the time. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to our listener, Sarah Elizabeth, who always retweets all of our links she says that uh she was looking forward to the show today to bring some cheer back into her life so sarah i hope i hope we did that uh, I and don't thank think you for so. everything that you do for us i don't think this was a cheery show but I, I get i get the i get the compliment john and she does retweet a lot of us but this is <laughs> this is probably not the show you want to tune into if you're maybe not for, uh... <laughs> necessarily cheery but again very important you know until you know to let to let people know to just like I said to be be aware of your surroundings and be aware of your kids' surroundings and you know, as 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 our hero of the week Olivia Keith said you know she gave a list of all of these injuries that are the major killers of of children and they're all things that can be prevented every one of them every every one of those things can be prevented if we're aware and we take the necessary steps well Sarah can rest easy because if the show didn't cheer you up the picture of Adrian that I just took certainly will. <laughs> we'll be tweeting that out momentarily, so you'll have a chance to chime in and retweet some more fun stuff. Uh, Adrian, in closing, what do you got? In closing, well, you know, I mean, uh, the show has decidedly uh, ended very quickly. Um, in closing, obviously, I want to thank all the new members of the Peace Fund who are now, I know we've interviewed uh, a number of you so far for certain uh, project management positions. And uh, we will be going on to our social media positions and all the other positions within the Peace Fund. Many of you replied uh, and sent in your resumes for us to take a look at. And uh, we have uh, happily been able to uh, uh, garner the support of um, some fantastic individuals. And I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Uh, We have, as I said, some of those will be coming on to the paintball and to the golf tournament and the... um, a poker tournament that we have that will come on as project managers but there will be many other people who would you know if you want to be a volunteer if you live in southern california when we've got our paintball competition we will need volunteers and i will be asking for that that's a that's another thing because we will have to man that event that event may be a very large event larger event than many people actually imagine but uh, I'll, I'll i'll get into that much later anyway john thank you so much for uh for joining us and bringing us the Hero of the Week this week. Thank you, guys. And like I said, we're going to have Olivia on the show very soon to talk a little bit more, a little bit more about what she does and how she does it. Fabulous. Cool. We also have some new uh, board members that are going to be joining us as well. I'll be also mentioning them once we uh, uh, verify that. Um, that will help us in different ways financially, uh, financial advisors as well as doctors, as well as uh, 
uh, entrepreneurs that will actually come on on our um, advisory board to advise us in certain areas that we can. Uh, I will advise better. you in awesome. Well, actually, you're going to be on the advisory board. You are going to be the advisor. You're, you're, I'm glad you're telling me. You, because you're so advising, now, I, <laughs> now you already accepted it. Don't don't lie on the air. Okay, oh, all right. You've already right, accepted because right, right. you're a great ideas man. I am a I am a administrator of awesomeness. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you to the Speechly family for making this show possible by providing us funding. Yes. Um, in closing. Uh, there are Beverly Shahara. Thank you for uh, helping me produce this show as well. Uh, yes. Out there, you, you garner us amazing information every week. And Carmel McPherson, Annie Christie, Camille Oakley. Camille, you can contact Camille at the Peace Fund regarding the, uh, the uh, David Frey Memorial event as well, which is happening in August. Uh, but in closing, a quote from Martha, Mar- Martin Luther King Jr. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. This is Adrian Paul and Ethan Dettenmeyer. I'll see you again. You're listening to Peace Fund Radio with Adrian Paul and Ethan Dettenmeyer right here on L.A. Talk Radio.